Hi guys, my name is Amber and for today's video I want to do the mid-year book freakout tag. So to start off I want to say that I've read 16 books so far this year which is a failure for me um, and I've DNF'd three so I guess kind of I've read 19 not really because you know I've DNF'd them three of them but um technically I have finished 16 books and currently I'm reading two books okay now into the questions so I'm going to be looking down at my phone because I have all the questions here so the first question asks what's the best book I've read so far in 2020 and for that I choose Six of Crows by Lee Bardigo so this book is about six a group of six people that do a heist together basically um that's like the shortest summary possible but it is so good it's just like i fell in love with the characters the action i loved um their relationships with each other and yeah it was just so good and i'm definitely excited to get to the next book in the series so the next question asks what's the best sequel i've read so far in 2020 so i haven't read that many sequels this year um but if I had to choose out of the ones I've read so far this year, I would choose Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Yemi. I wouldn't say it's like my all-time favorite or anything, but out of the few that I've read, sequels that I've read so far this year, I would say that one. Um, it was a good middle, it was okay. I feel like it had, a lot of people were saying like a middle book syndrome. Um, so hopefully that's the case and the next book is like more way more better because a lot of people were saying and after I, I read those reviews and stuff about it um I agree that it was I felt like the main character was not being herself she was kind of different from how she was acting in the um first book so we'll see um how it goes in the third book but I really enjoyed that one so far out of the best the best out of all the sequels I read this year um, also, the first book is Children of Blood and Bone, and that's really good. It's just about this girl um, who's bringing magic back to her world because the king kind of stole it. And again, I'm giving like I'm giving like the shortest, most basic summaries ever that probably aren't even convincing you to read these books, but they're highly re recommended. So next is the new releases you haven't read yet but want to. Um, I have literally so many because I've only read 16 books so far this year and I haven't been keeping up with like anything so basically every book I was anticipating this year I'm still wanting to read but I have like a long list so I'm just going to show like pictures here and like here are some of the ones because I literally I it was it, this was hard to break down to just these few because I had literally so many that I wanted to read um, that have already came out so we have Bone Choir's Moon, The Raven and the Dove, Clap When You Land, the Princess Will Save You, Girl Serpent Thorn, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, and that's the second book in the Carl series. And then those are like the few books that have already come out so far this year that I'm really like excited to read. And then the next question asks the most anticipated reads of this for the second half of the year. So I also have a kind of a long list for that one too. I think I might do a separate video where I just talk about my anticipated books for the second half of the year. So for now, I'm going to say... Oh, this is kind of hard to choose, but I'm going to say A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. Uh, I feel like I haven't heard anyone talk about that, so I'll just suggest that here in this video. And then I want to make another video where I just talk about all of the other books I'm really excited to get to for the second half of the year. Um, this book is about this girl. She's Cuban, as it is, says in the title. And, you know, things kind of go wrong. And so what she's anticipating for the summer ends up being different. And she ends up having to go to England, where some of her other family members are. And she meets a guy, let's just say that. I go, that's really a short summary. That's not even like the summary that I read really convinced me. But um, yeah, just that's like an exciting thing for me. Like I like the idea of going to another country and like meeting a guy. Like I just like that idea for myself. So like why not read a book about it? <laughs> so yeah. That's one of the books that I'm really excited to get to. Number five, the biggest disappointment, I would say is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So, story about this, um, there's this show on Netflix called The Haunting of Hill House, I'm pretty sure. Now I'm like not even sure if it's even the same thing, 
um, because I watched that show and it was so good and like I loved it. it had me on the edge of my seat I was scared I was like ooh, it was it was so good and so I was like wow I really need to delve into this world I, I don't know if it's like horror it's like paranormal horror I don't even know what it's considered um but then I heard that there was a book for it and I was like oh my gosh this is based off a book like that's great like I love reading why not buy the book and read it of course and so I got the this special edition actually let me get it so I got this penguin horror edition and I was like yes I'm so down oh I just hit myself okay great um I was like yeah I'm so down like and it's really it's really really small so I was like yeah I'm gonna get through this quick it's gonna be like so good I'm so excited um yeah no it was so boring to me even I even had the audiobook and I was like I couldn't get through it and it kind of put me in a slump not gonna lie um and I've kind of been in a slump for a while not even just because of this book because of some other books too but um out of all of them this is my biggest disappointment um because I was really expecting it to be like the show because I love the so show so much and it was literally nothing like it it was nothing like like literally at all. all the only aspect that was the same was the house that there was a haunted house that's it that's the only thing that the two shows had in common was a haunted house so um again I don't know why the show is called the same thing as this I maybe mean, I need to look into it more to see why they're called the same thing when they're basically not even alike or maybe I need to finish the story and maybe I'll find out that they are similar but I don't even know like it this was I might give it another try because I'm like now that I'm talking about it again I'm like uh I really want to try it again but we'll see and the next question asked the biggest surprise of 2020 so I would say that's Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. Um, I have both of her books. I have Emergency Contact and that one. And, you know, I heard things about it and I wasn't, like, I heard that it was good. But I wasn't thinking too much into it. You know, I bought it. But, like, I was like, oh, okay, it's just another contemporary. It's going to be basic. Um, but it was actually really good. I really enjoyed it. So when I went into it, I wasn't expecting much. This is why it's my biggest surprise because I wasn't expecting much and then I went into it and I was like wow this is really good and I could relate to it so much I think it was mainly because it was a contemporary about a college student and like his struggles plus the cute little romance but um yeah I could relate to that most mostly like the contemporaries that I've read have always been high school kids um so I guess that was my biggest surprise of the year just because I could relate to it so much and I really just really enjoyed it so I'm excited for emergency mer for emergency contact now so favorite new author i wouldn't say they're like my favorite of all time or anything but just for this year so far out of the books i've read i would have to say lee bardugo and katie o'neill katie o'neill is with the tea dragon society and then lee bardugo because of six of crows um i really enjoyed the tea dragon society so far the two books that she has and so like everything that she like all the um books or whatever comics whatever they're called why, why am i forgetting what it's called oh graphic novels um any, any of those that she's written so far like i want to read all of it now just because of the first two books so far in the tea, tea dragon society little series are like so good and the art and like the stories behind it are just so good that i'm excited to read more of her work and then of course six of crows like that was so good and so now i just want to read like everything that Lee Bardugo has come out with. Newest fictional crush, I could not think of one. Uh, yeah, I don't think I am crushing on anyone, but for the next question, who's your newest favorite character? I would say it's Kaz Brecker. Um, I just really liked his personality. I, the bad parts and the good parts, I just loved his character so much in the book and yeah, I don't know what else to say. He, I just loved his character a lot. He's like one of, he's my favorite, not even one of my favorites. He is my favorite in the Six of Crows duology. Next is a book that made you cry. Um, I couldn't think of one. I don't think I have. I've definitely gotten like really um, sad or frustrated, but I don't think I've ever actually, so far this year, shed a tear. And then the next question, a book that made you happy. 
and I would have to choose The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. It was just super cute, like light read that definitely made my day, made me happy, and definitely excited for the third book in the series. Um, yeah. Next is The Most Beautiful Book You've Bought So Far This Year, and I don't know if this counts because I've already had these books, but I would have to say these beautiful editions, the books, now we don't support J.K. Rowling. However, this, these things I bought from like another company that doesn't, you know, associate with her, I'm guessing, um, called Nerdy Ink, and they sell just the covers, and so I bought all new covers for the Harry Potter books, um, and they're literally so beautiful. Um, my favorite is probably this one with Luna on it. It's really pretty and I really liked the back. Really cute. Um, but again, don't support J.K. Rowling. I buy all of your books. If you are interested in the series, don't support her by buying them like um, from stores or whatever buy them like secondhand or like eBay, you know, like all those places because we don't support her. Thirteenth question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, I have a, like literally my whole bookshelf, you know, just like literally my whole bookshelf, except for the ones I've read, of course, but um, there's not many of those. So, but to name off a few, The Guinevere Deception, Ninth House, Wicked Fox, Nevernight, Scythe, the Mortal Instrument series, the Infernal Devices series, the Shatter Me series, Crooked Kingdom. I'm really, I really want to get to that. Um, like all of Lee Bardugo's books. So many. It's mostly like older books, you know. Um, and then the 14th question, last one, says favorite book community member, which I'm guessing that's worded weird. I'm guessing it's like your favorite booktuber. So I have a lot, um, but just to name a few, because literally there's so many that I love, but we have Throne of Pages. I'm going to like try to put their pictures here. She's like, I wish, is she my number one? I think she is. Like she, I just love her style, the vibes of her videos. Just That's basically the pattern with all of these people. It's just like I love their editing style. Um, their vibes and just their themes with their accounts and everything like it's just beautiful so we got throne of pages boston reads books chanel time olivia reads a latte chasing pages mayana reads basically brit jocelyn reads tiana t and Brittany the bibliophile and tiana t i really like her she's like a new one that i just found um the rest I've kind of been following for like a while, but for 2020, um, I should have just said that in the first place and just had her as my only answer because she's like my new 2020. This is about 2020. That was kind of silly of me. Um, but yeah, she, I like her personality. It's super like funny, sarcastic. Like she is super funny and I could like watch her whole videos through, you know, all these people I could watch all their videos, but she's one of the main people that is like easy to get me to watch her whole video all right that is the end of this video i really hoped you enjoyed my little mid-year book forgot tag my first one i was going to say uh my first one as well so i wanted to do one last year but you know i just i wasn't up for it but my first ever one and uh, hopefully the first of many more and yeah hope you enjoyed it make sure you like subscribe comment down below this emoji yeah you should do it um, just to let me know that you've got to the end of this video and yeah, bye.